Hi, welcome back to Artfully Organized. In today's episode, we're gonna discuss ways to organize your art room specifically for absent students and early finishers. It's important to organize work for your absent students so they can quickly get caught up on missed lessons. It's also important to provide opportunities to further learning for our early finishers. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Paula Lise and I'm an art teacher in Maryland. Welcome to the Art of Education University's Artfully Organized, where we provide tips, tricks, and hacks to help bring order to your art room, while also addressing some of the challenges and complexities that come with art room organization. We'd love for you to like this video if you enjoy it and to hit subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. One of the things that I found the past two years is that when I have a student absent for a long period of time, how do I get my students to catch up with the work? So one of the things that I found that works is that I have these two pocket folders that I make in the beginning of the school year for each student. And in the two pocket folder, I photocopy every single worksheet. All of it goes into this folder. And if they are sick, I can send this folder home. Or if I know they're gonna be out for a long period of time, I can have them take it with them. And I post all the assignments in Google Classroom so they can just get out the worksheet. I usually let them know you're gonna be working on this worksheet. And this is a great handy way for them to catch up on work. Even though they're not in school, they have everything with them. I also, with my older students, I have a pouch like this, a little mesh pouch just like this, and they keep their sketchbooks, their pencils, sometimes I send home microns, color pencils, everything goes in here. They have access to all their supplies. So same thing, if they're sick, if they're going to be home for a long period of time, I can send this pouch home with them and they can just take it or someone can come pick up the pouch and my students have all their supplies with them and so they're not gonna fall behind with their classwork. If you're looking for more ideas on ways to structure your classroom and activities for early finishers and absent students, hop on over to Art of Education University's magazine. We'll link a few helpful articles and podcasts in the description box below. Okay, so this here behind me is my early finisher station and I kind of have all different activities for the kids to engage in if they finish a project early. Let me just show you. So here I have some free draw fortunes for the kids, which are kind of like story starters. These are some masterpiece postcards for inspiration. They can copy, there's information. I've been saving these from School Arts Magazine for a very long time, all the gallery cards. I have some coloring sheets, particularly for my younger kids. These are probably the most popular. You can see it's kind of a mess. Um, these are the how to draw books. Um, and I have them categorized people, vehicles, cartoons, exact, et cetera. And then the color code on the, on the side matches the code on the book so that the kids know where to put them. And then on the bottom are art history books um, and some games and puzzles. So this is my very meager but effective early finisher station. So my early finishers have a couple different options. When they have completed all of their work, they first need to show me the done sign. So this is sign language for the letter D, this means that they're done. So when they show me this done sign, I can do a quick check-in with them, make sure that they clean up everything, put everything away, and then they have a couple of different choices of what they can do. The first choice is that they can free draw. At the beginning of the year, all of my artists made sketchbooks, so they can use whatever supplies are already at their tables to draw inside their sketchbooks. They can also come to the front of the room, get colored pencils, markers, crayons, whatever they want, and draw at their tables. The other option is they can come up here and they can actually get a clipboard and put their sketchbook on the clipboard or get a scrap sheet of paper and they can just free draw on their rug. So I have these drawing references. They can also use them during their normal art projects as well, but they're all located up here. So this is just one option that I have for my early finishers. Some of these packets I created myself. So here for facial proportions, you can see I drew different eyes, nose, mouths, and diverse hairstyles. This was a resource I felt was lacking, so I just created my own. I have a packet on facial proportions. So fourth grade, we learn about facial proportions when drawing self-portrait. So there's one on how to use one point perspective to draw a landscape, one side's in English, one side's in Spanish. I have it for a landscape 
as well as a room. I shared in an earlier clip how I use class folders to track who is absent and what classes they've missed. One thing that I do when students are absent is that I actually ask their classmates to help teach them. And this is really great because it empowers students to share the knowledge that they've learned and it also just gets them really, really excited. So I always ask them if they're gonna be my student teachers. I wanted to give y'all a little hint about how I keep track of kids that are gone on clay day because we do all of our clay in the same week. If any students are absent, it's like a tricky thing when they come back and they've not done the clay project. So this is like very professional, but um, for each class, I just write down the students that are gone. But when um, they come back, and they're here the next week, I have one little station set up in the art room that's like a mini clay teaching station. And instead of me needing to teach the lesson to the students that were gone, I'll select one responsible kiddo to be the teacher and they create a second clay project while teaching the student that was gone what to do. So they make a second one and that ends up becoming like a gift for their homeroom teacher. So that's worked really well for us when we're trying to keep track of absent students. If you're enjoying all of these tips, check out Pro Learning, an on-demand PD for art teachers with hands-on tutorials, resources, and strategies. If you're a pro member, we have a pack with methods for early finishers. If you're not a pro member, head over to the website, which we'll link in the description box below for more information on how to get pro for your district. As we head over this way, I have all of the books that kids can access, but also that I usually use for reading. And then here we've got a bunch of manipulatives so that when students have extra time in the art room, they can pull one of the boxes out and just play. A lot of times students would prefer to just build instead of doing free choice or free draw. And I find that it's nice to give them a whole bunch of options with that. Another option that I have for artists that finish early is my reading corner. So here in the front of my room, I have a bookcase and it's filled with books about different artists, art history, there's storybooks, there's also I Spy books, as well as some art magazines and coloring pages. So one thing that they can do is to come here, they can grab a book and either read on the rug or read at their table while they're waiting for their classmates to finish. All right, so another favorite area in my classroom is my drawing guides wall. So here I have all of my drawing guides that I've created um, organized into these clear colorful folders. And whenever I need a particular drawing guide, I can grab the folder and pass them out. Um, me personally, I rely heavily on drawing guides because they help me when I'm teaching. And students like to have something close by that they can reference. So I use these a lot in my classroom and I definitely enjoy making them, but this definitely keeps me organized uh, for any lessons that are centered around drawing. So at the end of a long-term unit, I will have what I call catch-up day. This is a day for students that still need to catch up or complete their work. Meanwhile, all of the other tables have different centers. These centers range from printmaking to jewelry making to blocks. I also have these About Me packets that I made. Here's a closer look at my About Me packet. There's lots of open-ended prompts in here. And I also have another art sketchbook packet. This is something I originally made during the pandemic to go home with my pre-K students. This is something I now use just as early finisher sheets or packets that students can use. I'm providing my students an opportunity that need that extra time to have that chance to do that. Yet at the same time, my other students are also getting the opportunity to explore with different materials, try out new techniques. So overall, it's just a great fun way to end a unit before we move on to the next project. Hey, our teachers! That wraps up our episode on organizing work for absent students and early finishers. If you have any activities and systems that you use, we'd love to hear them in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed and that your notifications are turned on so that you don't miss future YouTube content. Thanks for watching and we hope you have a fabulous school year.